Vanessa, the IAP Cotton District Branch President. Most respected P. Sumaran Sir, the moderator of today's session. Uh, State President Vijay Mar Sir. Tanwa Sir, the State Coordinator of PG Club Activities of IAP. Senior IAPNs. Those are National EB Board member. I forgot to mention you. Uh, faculty members, junior residents, and all those who have joined on this Zoom platform. And we are here for the first session of PG Club organized by the IAP Cotton District Branch under the State Presidential Action Plan of 2022. And we were planning to conduct this program for a long time due to certain unavoidable reasons, just delayed actually. And today I'm happy that we got the app person to moderate the session as we are conducting this program for the first time at the vendor of IAP and District Branch. And I am here to welcome you all to this program. At the outset, I would like to welcome our beloved IAP Cotton District Branch President Joseph Patani, sir. Hearty welcome to you, sir. State President Vijay Mar, sir. Good night to Sister Fida. The program is under the State President's action, Presidential Action Plan promise. And PG Class Club is one of the activities of that. And uh, it is actually a dream child of Dr. M. Vijay Mar. He is the, apart from being the State President of IAP, he is a HOD of Pediatrics in Government Medical College, Manjeri. <coughs> On behalf of all of you present here and on my personal behalf, I welcome you, sir. And the today's session is moderated by T. U. Suman, sir. Sir needs no introduction to this audience. And first of all, he is my respected and beloved teacher for undergraduate and postgraduate studies. That was a former state president and also the national president of IAP in the year 2007. And being a government media college teacher, he was the KGMCT president for one year. So many fathers are there. He was the IC superintendent and professor of pediatrics and also professor of, uh, after retiring from the government service, he was a professor and HOD of the Pushpagiri Medical College. And sir is a senior consultant pediatrics in the hospital now. Sir, with much pleasure, I welcome you to this uh, meeting. And also, thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, sir, for uh, having a, and, uh, for accepting our invitation to moderate this session. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. Janavas, is the state coordinator of this action plan Presidential Action Plan. There is a Jury of Pediatrics in the Government Medi TD Medical College, Alapura. Hearty welcome to you, sir. And Dr. Joso, he also doesn't need an introduction to the IAP Quartem. He was one among us, and also he was with us in PCH uh, also for a few years. Uh, and he's a national EB bond member now, and he's working as, as additional professor of pediatrics in. TD Medical College, Alapura. Hearty welcome to you, sir. Then I welcome all the senior IAPNs who has gathered here, and also all the faculty members, all the junior residents who have joined the session. And special welcome to Dr. Preja and also Dr. Manu for arranging all these activities under the uh, Bag of IAP Cotton District Branch. Once again, I thank you all. I welcome you all for the, this meeting. JIAP. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will move on to our presidential address by Dr. Joseph Patani, sir. And as it's our maiden PG Club, sir, over to you. Good evening, all of you. Dr. Vijay Mar, Dr. T. S. Maran, our faculty member, as, as, as the leading figure in our uh, national as well as state 
i p is concerned he was a professor and uh, he held so much position he had and now also he is holding such a dynamic activities dr jos uh, president of kerala even though he has he passed within three two weeks he has put more weight also i don't know why <laughs> and dr dali ma'am our professor and hod of pediatrics ich dr sanwas professor of pediatrics at td medi college dr ajay presenter is a young chap coming with a wonderful program dr prija dr manu dr sahada all pg pg students i should say all budding pediatricians fellow iapens indeed it is a great pleasure that i stand i stand here because it is the first time we are starting a pg club program uh, in, the, in the history of iap uh, kota the fact is that uh, dr uh, dr dalima has initiated the whole headache actually is is a it's not a joke actually to conduct and create the subject and to present the subject i really appreciate her uh, audacity and coming forward to make a, such a grand function along with that and that i think we will this pg program should continue uh, we know uh, it will really educate, give much education to the not only the pg students but all the pediatricians around we are all happy to uh, be here and to participate in this function thank you very much thank you or to prija thank you sir uh next i invite for felicitation as vijay kumar sir has not could not join due to network issues i invite our state coordinator of pg club and head of the department td medical college arapura shanava sir to give his uh, for felicitation very good evening to all respected president uh, iap kottayam branch dr joseph sir past iap national president and our dual teacher tu sumaran sir secretary iap dr prija hod pediatrics dr dr jos o past pres uh, the president elect for 2020 uh, next year and my dear friends i am very happy to be a part of this iap teaching program it is a brain child of our uh, state action, uh, state president's action plan promise so we have started since last two months so for all the uh, last two months all the weeks were occupied by various uh, branches of iap and the attendance in all those were in above 100 in almost all cases and there was a uh, uh, very much interest in among interest among post graduate students regarding this topic and now it is the turn of kottayam uh, branch so uh, we, we used to plan we i uh, used to plan previously either kottayam or alappi will be presenting cases on the uh, third week of uh, as i think second week of each each month so either kottayam or alappi so this will be continuing again and again and i uh, ex- i express my the best wishes for this program thank you thank you very much thank you sir next i invite dr jose o for felicitation sir is a national ep member and he has he had a good schedule in national pedicon noida thank you sir for bringing us the award and over to you sir jose sir. can i give thank, thank you thank you preja is it audible Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh respected uh, chairperson of today meeting dr joseph atani sir uh, today the moderator our teachers of teacher dr c sumar sir dr darli maman dr shanava sir and all the uh, preja all the senior members of the iap kottayam and state level dr vijay kumar in his absence due to technical issue he was not able to join for that so it is a one of the important action plan for iap this year is concerned the pg club performing all the uh, state level in different branches 
So that was very, very coordinated by the National Shape Coordinator, Dr. Shanavas, sir, doing a wonderful job. I take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Shanavas, sir, Dr. Vidyagamam for a wonderful initiative to motivate the juniors to familiar with the teachers from different institutes, give an opportunity to discuss with their views, a different approach pattern of different case scenarios by different expert faculties in, the, in all our state. When, uh, that is very good initiative. I take the opportunity to congratulate Dr. Shanavas sir and Vijay Kumar sir for this wonderful opportunity. And again, I congratulate IAP Kottayam under the leadership of Dr. Patani sir, he's doing a wonderful job on different like, social and other in, academic activities and support with the ICH Kottayam. Dr. Rally Madam is a vice president of IAP Kottayam now doing a lot of activities. I think this will be enlightening for all of us and the chair, chair for their academic improvement programs. I think today then we have an excellent expert in the field of respiratory. Dr. Sumar sir is here to deal with a respiratory case scenario. I think this is also very enlightening for all of us to learning for our, our uh, uh, clinical skills. And we can hear about from the approach of Sumar sir and uh, Present later, we can have a good academic feast for today night. I wish you all the best for the program and all the best for Dr. Shanvas sir and Dr. Vijay Kumar for in coming in PG Club activities. Jai Hind, Jai IAP. Thank you, sir. Thanks, thanks for your kind words. Next, we'll go to the session. I invite our moderator of today's uh, session, Professor T. U. Sugmanan, sir, he who, not, he who needs no introduction as everybody told he is teacher of teachers and actually he is the respiratory guard cases he nobody can surpass him he is the the person to uh, we we can actually uh, ask to be our reference manual and as he has authored many books in respiratory cases we are really happy and we are glad that we have our first session is being moderated by T.U. Sumaran sir and the case will be dealt by Dr. Ajay Edwin over to the over to the session Do you see sir? Dr. Ajay? Uh, uh, yes, madam. Can I share the screen? So, so, so sir, is there. Uh, any issue with the Subhan, sir, net coverage? Uh, he has joined from two, two separate uh, mobile and laptops, sir. There is an issue with the video. Uh, he was he joined with the uh, mobile also, but uh, he's logged out of that, I think. Uh, one connection, sir. Ah, yeah. I think the video work in the sir. Lap in the mobile. Sir, on the lale, sir. Other than sir, on the and you are at a call down on the real. The video is not the end of madam. Moderate <laughs>
സാറിന്റെ സുവാരസ് ലാപ്ടോപ്പിലാണോ സാറേ സാറിന്റെ കേൾക്കുന്നില്ല സാറിന്റെ ഡ്രൈവർ എവിടെയാണെങ്കിൽ എന്റെ വീട്ടിലേക്ക് വന്നാലോ അഞ്ചു മിനിറ്റ് എടുക്കുള്ളൂ ആക്ച്വലി സാറിന് കുഴപ്പമില്ലായിരുന്നു സംസാരിച്ചപ്പോ സാറിന് എവിടെ കാണിക്കുന്നുണ്ടല്ലോ സാറിന്റെ മൊബൈല് ഉണ്ട് സാറേ സാറിന്റെ മൊബൈൽ ഉണ്ട് വീഡിയോ ഉണ്ട് സാറേ സാറിന്റെ വീട്ടിൽ ആരും ഇല്ലേ മക്കളാരും ഇല്ല തോന്നല്ലേ ഇല്ല സാറിന് വേണമെങ്കിൽ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് വരാം അത് ഏറ്റവും എളുപ്പം ഡിലൈൻ <laughs> problem, you can make a diagnosis at three levels and the first diagnosis comes up to history the second diagnosis comes up to physical findings and final diagnosis comes after investigations uh, so i will uh, now invite dr ajay edwin to present his case first of all he will present the case then we will discuss dr uh, edwin please ajay you share your slides uh, yes sir ഇൻഫോർമെന്റ് <laughs> 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 the chief presenting complaints of the child are the child had fever right sided chest pain and right sided shoulder pain of 6 days duration he had a nasal discharge and cough for 2 days duration and noisy breathing for 1 day the history of presenting complaints apparently normal child presented initially with fever the fever was of low grade intermittent in nature during the first 4 days and it mainly spikes during the night time it subsiding it was fever was subsiding with paracetamol and it was not associated with any chills or rigor the child was sick even during the interfebrile period for the last past 2 days uh, the child is having high grade continuous fever which was not subsiding with paracetamol the child also had associated right sided chest pain and right sided shoulder pain the chest pain was over the right lower chest it was an intermittent dull aching type of pain there were no history of any diurnal variation there was no history of any trauma the chest pain got aggravated by deep inspiration coughing and also touching the lower chest especially over the right side the chest pain got decreased when the child sleeps on the affected side and decreased movements and also during decreased movements and it got slight relief on taking paracetamol and during the last two days the chest pain was severe enough so that the child is not active and he is highly irritable okay ajay let me ask few questions now okay sir can you hear me yes sir yes what are the cause of chest pain in a child what are the common cause of chest pain in a child the chest pain can be uh, it can be of pulmonary causes oh. the pulmonary causes can be pneumonia pleurisy uh, asthma or uh, pneumothorax uh right. also, then it can be musculoskeletal pains are also much more common 
Yes. It, it can be due to trauma, uh, or costochondritis, or yes. it can arise uh, when herpes zoster, we, during herpes zoster infection, rib yes. fractures like that. Yes. And yes. Uh, other cardiac causes of chest pain include pericarditis, myocarditis, uh, endocarditis, uh, and there are gas. Pipes. What are the valvular issues that person with chest pain? Sir? Valvular heart disease that person with chest pain? Uh, sir. Uh, Anyone? Aiotic uh, stenosis, stenosis. But that is that is not the commonest problem. See, what about uh, mitral valve prolapse syndrome? Sir, mitral valve prolapse also. What is the commonest symptom of mitral valve prolapse syndrome? Is not specific chest pain. Okay. okay. Then pulmonary artery hypertension can present with chest pain. What are the other causes of chest pain? Gastrointestinal problems are also oh. there. Oh. Esophagitis, uh, cholecystitis, subdiaphragmatic abscess, mm. uh, and also uh, peptic ulcer disease. Mm. Then? Then uh, idiopathic causes are also there, which include anxiety, panic mm. disorder. Oh. Psychogenic, psychogenic problem. Psychogenic. So what do you think uh, this child is having now? Chest pain? Uh, the child is having uh, fever. Uh, the the chest pain. pain, what is the cause of chest pain in this child? Most commonly, it could be a respiratory cause only. Why? Why respiratory? The child is having fever, sir. fever, uh, fever, cough, and also a right lower chest pain, which uh, probably could have arisen due to uh, a right lower pneumonia with uh, effusion. See, what is the importance of cough? If, okay. Is cough a common symptom in pneumonia, lobar pneumonia? More common symptom or less common symptom? Air classification. No, no, not air classification. As a cough as a symptom of pneumonia. Is it very common in lobar pneumonia or less common? Less common. Why less common? Answer is right. See, cough is not a very common symptom in a lobar consolidation. But in a child with an atypical pneumonia, in a child with a bronchiolitis, cough is not cough, cough is a predominant symptom. Why cough is not a predominant symptom in pneumonia? See, the, the, the reason is that the cuff receptors are mainly present at the bifurcation of the lung, bifurcation of the bronchus. It is more commonly seen in the bifurcation. And in the alveoli uh, and interstitium, the cuff receptors are less in the alveoli and lung parenchyma. So, cough is not a predominant symptom. So, cough is a predominant symptom in a disease uh, which mainly affects the bronchus and bronchioles. For example, in the child with asthma, in the child with the typical pneumonia, it may be predominant symptom. So it may be a, not a predominant syndrome. So you think that is a respiratory problem in this child? No. What type of respiratory problem? Lower, lower respiratory tract infection. Oh. See, lower respiratory infection is a very, very vague term. See, uh, this uh, lower respiratory infection and all comes under ARI control program. In an ARI control program, you can use these uh, terms like that. But in a clinical discussion for a VG, you should not use a terms uh, like this. It should not be used. And uh, what is the main uh, cause of uh, chest pain in this child? Is it a pleuritic chest pain? Sir, it is a pleuritic chest pain. What are the features of a pleuritic chest pain? The child is having uh, pleuritic What chest are the features of a pleuritic chest pain? Mainly, it is a dull liking type of chest pain. Pleuritic pain is dull liking? Pleuritic chest pain, sir. Is dull liking? Dull. Interesting. Catching that or catching type of pain. Ah, catching and dull liking is totally different. Catching. In a pleuritic chest pain, is a catching type of pain or a stabbing type of pain. Yes, then what are the other features? Also, the child is having uh, it, it got aggravated by deep inspiration, coughing. Yeah, deep inspiration, coughing, it is it got aggravated. It is getting the child is getting slight relief on dying on the affected side during his splinting affected. And also during expiration, it will be less. So, do you think it is an, um, uh, an uh, pneumonia in this child? Pleuritis? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Any other condition? That can be present with the right side of chest pain and uh, which is uh, referred to shoulder. Uh, Subdiaphragmatic abscess. Ah, yes. Another condition is subdiaphragmatic abscess. Subdiaphragmatic abscess can be present with the irritation of the diaphragm and they can have pain over the chest and a repaired pain on the right shoulder. So you think it is a probably a pneumonia in this side. That's yes, right. Proceed. 
Tail also shoulder pain. Yeah, the oh. shoulder pain was a pricking type of pain. It was present over the right shoulder. There was no history of any trauma. Uh, the shoulder pain got aggravated during the deep inspiration and movements <laughs> of the shoulder, and it got relieved by paracetamol. And when the child lying on the affected side. Okay. Uh, the child was having nasal discharge and cough for the past two days. The nasal discharge was watery in nature. Uh, it was not foul smelling. It occurred mainly during the night time. And the cough was of acute onset. Initially, it was a dry type cough which was followed by wet sounding cough. He was not spitting out any sputum. It is intermittent in nature and mainly it occurs during the night time. There was no associated postesy vomiting, no aggravating or relieving factors. There is one question now. You said uh, this child had mainly nocturnal cough. What are the causes of nocturnal cough in a child? Gastroesophageal reflux disease, sir. Oh. When is it uh, seen? One is a gastroesophageal reflux disease. In a gastroesophageal reflux disease, at what time of night the child developed cough? After the child went to um, went to sleep, sleep and uh, uh, yeah, after, yeah. One, after some time only. See, the child has cough after one to two hours after going to the bed. Then it is gastroesophageal reflux. What are the other causes of uh, nocturnal pain, nocturnal cough? The, uh, 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 post-nasal trip, sir. Post-nasal trip, right then? Then uh, asthma. As then? Then? Uh, viral irritant cough, sir. Irritant cough. No, it's a nocturnal cough. Uh, in no. asthma, uh, what is the timing of cough in asthma? Early morning, sir. Early morning. Eh? Early morning. Early morning means what, what time? Uh, 3 o'clock. No, it's around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. This is early morning. Okay. Then what are the other causes of nocturnal cough? In other condition, that present is mainly nocturnal cough. Sir, uh, uh, tuberculosis. Oh, tuberculosis is nocturnal cough. It's both that time and uh, night. There is no difference at all. In your condition, which you get uh, mainly a nocturnal cough. In a child with a, in a pulmonary. cardiac failure, yes. Pulmonary edema, sir. Pulmonary edema. At what time the child will present with cough? How many hours after sleep? In a pulmonary edema, how many hours after sleep the child will present with cough? It is uh, usually two hours after. Uh, Lying down, the child will present with cough. But the commonest condition of a nocturnal cough is a post-nasal trip. Is not so? Post-nasal trip, then gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, then a child with asthma. Uh, uh, these are the common conditions that present with cough. But uh, was it uh, more in the night time in this child? Are you sure? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, then proceed. Child had noisy breathing for the past one day. It was noticed as training while take, taking breaths, and it was more when the fever is present. There was no diurnal variation and no increased. The mother didn't even notice any increased breathing effort or fast breathing for the child. Child showed refusal to feed for past one day. It just means see, no CB breathing is a very important symptom in any respiratory system disease. It will help in making a diagnosis. Actually, just like a neurological problem. You can uh, localize the disease by using a noisy breathing. What are the noisy breathing that is heard in the respiratory system disease? What are the common noisy breathing? Stretcher, sir. Stretcher. Ah. Stretcher is the first sound. It is heard mainly during due to nasal or airway secretions. Uh, yes. It is otherwise called snuffle. Snuffling. Okay. Right. And, uh, snoring, which is due to oropharyngeal obstruction. Oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal? Nasopharyngeal obstruction. No, what is the commonest cause of nasopharyngeal obstruction in a child? What is the commonest cause of nasopharyngeal obstruction in a child? A common thing. A child present with open mouth, snoring. Uh, adenoid, sir. Adenoid. Adenoid hypertrophy. Right. Yeah. Then. Yes. Sir, next one is grinding, sir. Grinding. Uh... Yeah, I think uh, you can go from upwards to downwards. You said the snuffling, snoring. What is the problem? What is the sound that is heard in a disease of the uh, larynx and trachea? Strider, sir. Strider. Yeah, okay. It is strider. What are the types of strider? Strider is inspiratory or expiratory? Inspiratory, expiratory. Inspiratory. It can be inspiratory or expiratory. Uh, inspiratory strider is due to a problem where? Uh, 
inspiratory strain of case as a result of a problem which, which part of the above the uh, oh okay above the vocal cords uh -huh. this supraglottic yes sir supraglottic infraglottic is what is the timing in infraglottic strider infraglottic expiratory sir expiratory this mainly expiratory is there a biphasic strider yes sir where is the pathology in biphasic strider this is mainly in the vocal cord the glottis is uh, biphasic okay there no other what are the other sounds that is heard noise breathing sir uh, next one is uh, grunting sir glottis glottis before sir. before grunting there is a more sounds are there rattling are there rattling rattling is there then what is the sound produced by bronchus problem the bronchus and bronchioles this this bs bronchus or bronchioles the brain problem is is bc then this is grunting grunting where is the problem in grunting which part of the respiratory system is affected by grunting sir grunting uh, is uh, expression against a partially closed to glottis sir partially closed to glottis. oh you think the problem is in the glottis no parenchyma no. the lung parenchyma the child is having a lung parenchyma problem the child present with bc uh, so it is very easy to localize is a sniffling it is in the uh, in the nose if it is uh, uh, if it is snoring is of pharynx if it is strider larynx and trachea then if it is in the bc bronchus and bronchioles and if it is grunting it is parent lung parenchyma lesion so what is the type of uh, uh, noise breathing in this child you are not described child is having uh, grunting sir grunting what do you think is grunting but yes. you said uh, straining it is just like straining or in malayalam what do you call it in malayalam what do you ask mukkuga ha ah, it is just like mukkuga as the mother of the child is having mukkal undo nu choyikana so this child is having grunting so definitely this child is having a lung parenchyma disease and what is the common lung parenchyma disease pneumonia sir pneumonia suppose a newborn grunts newborn grunts respiratory distress syndrome ah it is an uh, hmd hmd okay right so this child is having a social <laughs> grunting which shows that the child is having a lung parenchyma disease okay right proceed tapni okay so right. there is yes. no history of any altered sensor and there was no history yes. of any infection or trauma there was no history of any ear discharge no history of any throat pain no history of any exposure to dust or cold what is the importance of all these things what is the importance of skin infection the ear discharge sir first one uh, first one is about uh, the uh, danger signs of pneumonia la yeah, skin infection vomiting and uh, okay that is a danger sign uh, skin no infection skin infection or trauma to skin infection trauma ear discharge and throat pain to find out the cause ah oh, yes Post. Okay, that is a predisposing factor for a staph pneumonia. Yes. Yeah, okay, right. Exposure to dust or cold to roll out any uh, allergic causes. Okay. Noise of aspiration of food or foreign body. Aspiration pneumonia. Okay, right. Noise of an accidental ingestion of toxic chemical to roll out chemical pneumonitis. Okay. Noise of bluish discoloration of lips, nails, exertion of dyspnea, swelling of the body to roll out cardiac causes. Okay. Noise of any chronic or for weight loss, uh, cystic fibrosis. Oh. Like, So TB. you suspect the cystic fibrosis in this child? No, sir. TB, tuberculosis. Oh, what is meant by chronic cough? More what is than, chronic cough? More than. More than. Uh, more than. How many weeks? One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? Three weeks, sir. Ah, yes, sir. A child present with a cough more than three weeks, you called as a chronic cough. What is the duration of cough in TB tuberculosis? Two weeks. This is more than two weeks. Yes. This is not three weeks. But we do suspect cystic fibrosis for this child. No, no, sir. No, why not? What is the usual history of cystic fibrosis? He will be having recurrent respiratory infections. Yes, then. Uh, he will be having cough, chronic cough also. Chronic cough. Recurrent, chronic cough. Recurrent respiratory infections. Then. then what is the other common symptom of cystic fibrosis chronic cough child present with bronchiectasis child present with what is the gi manifestation git delayed ah passage of meconium ah yes sir in the newborn delayed passage of meconium 
or a child presented with a meconium ileus yes then then older children older child what is the ga manifestation uh, 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 chronic heart disease. It is there. What is the other GA man uh, intestinal manifestation? Malabsorption. Ah, malabsorption. A child person with a malabsorption syndrome. These are the uh, common uh, symptoms of uh, malabsorption in a child. Cystic fibrosis. Can it be cystic fibrosis for this child? No, sir. No, okay. Right. Then? Why is there any bone pain? Why? Well, yeah, see, uh, you can add some positive findings which is related to the present problem. Is bone pain important in this child? Sir, uh, What is the commonest cause of bone pain in a child? One is malignancy. Oh, malignancy. Yes, is it a malignancy for this child? Any fractures, sir. Is it a malignancy for this child? Uh, no, no, sir. Why? Then why you, are, why you ask about all these things? See, I think uh, your uh, negative points should be limited. And also you must ask negative points, which is related to the present problem. In this child, the present problem is a chest pain, cough, Birthlessness and fever. So I think uh, bone pain and all these things are not important in this child. Okay, proceed. Uh, the course of the child before presenting to our hospital, uh, during the first day of the illness, the child was taken to a local hospital for the above complaints and he was given paracetamol three times daily and he was reassured and was sent home. But the fever and the pain persisted. So on the third day of the illness, they again consulted the local hospital He was given paracetamol suppository and uh, also advised to continue paracetamol and was reassured and sent home. X-ray was taken at that time uh, was told to be normal. Okay. The right shoulder pain gradually decreased, but fever and the right side chest pain persisted. So on the fifth day of illness, uh, the child also had nasal discharge and cough, and on the sixth day, child had noisy breathing and decreased food intake. So they again taken the child to a local hospital. X-ray was taken and told to have pneumonia and referred to our hospital. Hey, what was the first X-ray? First X-ray was taken on the second day, no? First X-ray was taken on the third day, sir. Third day was it normal? The, it was told to be normal. Can uh, chest X-ray be normal in a child with pneumonia? Uh, yes, sir. In the early phases of pneumonia, the X-ray can be normal. Okay, in the early phase of pneumonia, X-ray may be normal. In your situation? in a dehydrated child also uh, if, the, if the child is very much dehydrated also x may be normal once the child gets hydrated the x may show evidence of pneumonia so first x was normal okay then the sixth day they must have pneumonia yes sir then how what happened sir when the child was sir child arrived at the hospital arrived at our hospital child was admitted in pediatric icu Respiratory support was given through nose with the help of ventilator. X-ray chest was taken and was informed that the child was having a pneumonia of the right side with fluid. Was, was the child ventilated? No, sir. No, with the help of non-invasive ventilation. Ah, this is non-invasive ventilation. Non uh, not ventilation. Non-invasive ventilation. Okay, right. X-ray chest was taken and was informed to the mother that the child was having pneumonia of the right side with fluid collection and may need to be drained after ultrasound scan of the chest. Okay. Child, child was started on some IV antibiotics, and mother was also informed that the blood investigations were also suggestive of infection. Mm. On day two, ultrasound scan of the chest was taken, and uh, was informed that there is some infective fluid collection in the right side and needs to be drained. Pediatric surgery consultation was done and advised a CT scan of the chest and confirmed the above findings. Okay. On day three, mother told that the chest tube was put to the child, and the pus-like fluid was draining through the tube. The same fluid was also sent for some investigations. Okay. On day four, mother was informed about the need for some medication, which needs to be given through the chest tube, and was given for total five days duration. On day five, the what child, is that medication? What is that medication? Probably fibrinolytics. Fibrinolytics. Which are the fibrinolytics? Yes, so urokinase, streptokinase, and alteplase. Okay, right. Day five, the child got symptomatically better with a decreased fever and distress, and respiratory support given by the ventilator was stopped and the oxygen was continued via tube. Okay. On day seven, the mother was informed that there is a growth, there is growth of organism in the fluid that was taken from the chest, and antibiotics were changed according to that. Day eight, the child improved with normal respiratory effort and fever subsided, and he was weaned off from oxygen. 
pus was straining through the tube also got decreased okay then uh, during uh, and then the days the, during this period during from day 8 to day 16 the l was continued on iv antibiotics uh, and on day 16 since there was no drainage from the chest tube for almost two days x ray was taken and informed that there is improvement ultrasound repeated and showed improvement but they were informed that pockets of collection were still present and needs to be aspirated under ultrasound guidance aspiration was tried but no aspirate was obtained so iv antibiotics was continued okay on day 24 repeat x ray was taken which showed improvement the chest tube drain became nil and child was fully asymptomatic and chest tube was removed and iv antibiotics were stopped okay on day 29 the child was discharged from our hospital with oral antibiotics and mother was informed that the antibiotics are needed for total 6 weeks and asked them to keep under follow up okay now you can summarize the case now history is over is it not so yes sir summarize uh, it's a 4 and a half year old male child who presented with complaints of fever right sided chest pain and right sided shoulder pain of 6 days duration and also the child is having cough and nasal discharge for 2 days and uh, noisy breathing for one day uh, the the child was initially uh, treated from local hospital with the local antipyretics with the antipyretics which does doesn't subside and uh, then uh, they were informed on the third day of the illness that the child is having some pneumonia and was referred to our hospital uh, on, on arriving our hospital the child was having severe respiratory distress so uh, the child was Uh, when uh, given uh, uh, non invasive ventilation and also uh, iv antibiotics were continued the chest tube was put on the second third day of uh, arrival to our hospital and pus training was present from the chest tube fibrinolytic uh, treatment was given on the fifth day and the child got improved and weaned off and completely off o2 by eighth day of the illness Uh, from there onwards, uh, the child child is child is getting improved, and on day 24 the ICD tube was removed, uh, and on day 29 the child was discharged from our hospital. So what is the diagnosis now? What is the history? You have presented a very detailed history now. The child was having right side and empty muscle. I think the child is having a, a right side and empty muscle. Is there associated pneumonia for this child? Yes, uh, the child had fever. Uh, yes, sir. What are the common causes of embryo in a child? Uh, common causes of embryo. Sir, pneumonia. Ah, oh, yes, right. Pneumonia. Which pneumonia is associated with embryo commonly? Yeah. What are the commonest organs that produce embryo? The streptococcus pneumonia. Is pneumococcus? Yes, right. Okay. And staphylococcus. Then staphylococcus. Okay, then. The cause of embryo is our first cause is child child was the pneumonia is the first cause. No, pneumonia is the first cause. Okay, para pneumonia vision and embryo. Then, sir, uh, sub sub diaphragmatic abscess. Okay, right. Any esophageal surgery. Yes, common conditions in a child. Lung abscess. Lung abscess can rupture. Okay, well. Any uh, then tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is rarely can present with that. Yes, and by ma. Okay, right. Then any other systemic disease? Any systemic disease? Mm. Any immunodeficiency disease? HIV? HIV? HIV, HIV, sir. Acha 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 we can present with the uh, with this embryo, chill with the immunodeficiency they can present with the embryo, trauma to the chest. So la, there are a lot of conditions are there. But you think it is a pneumonia in this child? Okay, proceed now. Proceed. Phoenix now. Okay. Other histories? The past histories are there was history. See there you can say significant points in the history. If there are some significant point you can say uh, say that otherwise you can say it is normal. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Last history, the child was having history of acute lower respiratory infection at eight months and one and a half years. Both are oh, acute. Oh, okay, that is not significant. Yeah. Okay. Then antenatal, natal, and postnatal history, uh, there was no significant history. Sir, it was normal. Okay, right. Uh, 
the developmental history the child was normal developmental milestones attained at respective ages with no developmental delay nutrition history also uh, the child is having a calorie deficit of 150 kilo calorie the child is fully immunized protein intake protein intake is also important how much protein the child is getting he is taking excess of protein excess of protein that is the usual history that we see in most of our patients uh, the caloric intake is less but protein intake is usually higher in most of the patient okay right child is immunized up to age sir immunized up to pneumococcal vaccine was not taken but then why is it immunized up to age according to national immunization schedule the old one all immunization old schedule he is immunized up to age uh, now according to the new national immunization schedule how many doses of uh, pneumococcal vaccine are given three doses sir eh? three doses when sixth week for 10th 6th week 10th week 14th okay. week 9th month ah. and 9th ni- month which are the pneumococcal vaccine available now the pcv 13 Oh, right. PCV 10, PCV 13, and PPSV 23. No, which are yes, yes, PCV 10. How many PCV 10 are there? The PCV 10, three dose. PCV 10 is the one which we are giving in our. Ah, oh, that is by the Serum Institute of India. PCV 10. The new P. You can call it as a new PCV. New PCV 10. The old PCV 10 is there. Then PCV 13 is there. What are the uh, new PCVs in pipeline? New PCVs are coming now. Yes, sir. Any new PCV that is coming up? Uh, PCV 15 and PCV 20 is are under trial now. Which PCV will you prefer? PCV 10, new PCV 10 or PCV 13? Which will you prefer? PCV 13, sir. Why? Just got a better coverage. Which are the Uh, strains that is covered by PCV13 in anti over the PCV10, which are the strains covered by additionally covered by PCV13 over PCV10. How many strains? Three are there. No. Three, four, eighteen. PCV3, three, three, four, four. Three. Three. Fourteen and six. Eh. Hey. Eighteen, eighteen, eighteen. Eighteen. This is number three, six, nineteen. Six and three, seven. three plus six, ah, nine. Three plus six, nineteen. This is nine. Nine. You add one more. Three, six, six and nineteen. A nineteen. A is additionally there in PCV thirteen. Three, six and nineteen. A it is there. So it is a better protection is there for with the PCV thirteen. What are the main indications of PCV? This one you were talking about the polysaccharide vaccine. Polysaccharide vaccine, sir. Uh, ah. What are the indications for PPV? Polysaccharide vaccine. Ah, polysaccharide vaccine. Uh, sir, it can be given for uh, nephrotic syndrome cells. Ah, right. Uh, then. Uh, then it can be given out for cochlear implant. Yes, right. Common conditions. Before splenectomy. Ah, oh, right. Before, before the egg giving splenectomy. Then, okay. Then these are the common conditions you will get P P P P V. So this child has not taken pneumococcal vaccine. All other vaccines are <coughs> taken. Which are the vaccines that can prevent pneumonia? Is is that your diagnosis? This child is pneumonia. Which are the vaccines that can prevent pneumonia? B C G, sir. B C G. Eh? B C G, right? Ah. Uh, B P T. Yes. So what process? Then process. I'm I'm measles vaccine. Measles vaccine. Then pneumococcal vaccine. Yes. Then Hib Hemophilus influenza vaccine. Yeah, then uh, newer vaccine now. Given at six months. Ah, sir, influenza vaccine. Ah, see, almost all. It is said that almost all vaccines can prevent pneumonia. So it is very important that you immunize children with all the available vaccine because all these vaccines can prevent. And pneumonia. Then lastly, you have said uh, there is no optional vaccine vaccine taken. What is my optional vaccine? No, sorry, no optional vaccine. All done, sir. Optional vaccine. All done. Now, all how done. will you how will you classify the vaccines now? Good option. Vaccines for routine immunization and vaccines for uh, vaccines for special. Ah, uh, now there is no optional vaccine now. 
all the optional vaccines has come under va vaccines for routine immunization. immunization. Second is vaccines for special situations. There's a classification. There is no AEFI for this child. Okay. So this child has not received pneumococcal vaccine. Okay, right. No significant family history, sir. Okay. Socioeconomic status also uh, for pneumonia, there will be risk factors as pet in house, pets in house present, firewood burning present with no chimney, asbestos roofing in the bedroom without false roofing present, overcrowding was also present. I, I, I think it should be a socioeconomic and environmental history in a child. Love is socioeconomic history, you can add environmental history. Socioeconomic history and environmental history. Environmental history also you can divide it into two parts. You must also ask about the outdoor pollution, indoor pollutants. That should be asked for. Outdoor and indoor pollutants. Indoor pollutants mainly ask for second and tobacco smoke. So socioeconomic and environmental history should be there. Uh, so there are no positive, positive findings in the other histories now. So it is an acute onset of symptoms. Okay, right. Examination. The general examination, the child was sick looking with increased work of breathing, mild pallor was present, there was no ictrocyanosis, clubbing, edema or lymphadenopathy. The vitals, pulse rate. Uh, will you expect clubbing so early? Uh, sir, uh, clubbing, uh, M by my child, lung abscess and M by my child can. Oh, present with clubbing. Uh, okay. With clubbing. Okay, right. Pulse rate, sir, uh, right. right. Right radian, 120 per minute, just normal rhythm, volume, character. You can say, say just say the positive findings now. Kidney was present, sir. Respiratory rate was 15 per minute. Oh. Temperature was also having temperature in the right axis at the time of. What do you mean with tachypnea? The tachypnea, according to air control program, up to two months, 60, above 60, 60 breaths per minute. Two months to twelve months, above fifty. Then uh, twelve months to uh, years. Is there a difference in the cutoff uh, value in malnourished children? You said it's sixty, fifty, forty. Is there a change in the cutoff value? Yeah. I don't know. Sir. See, in children with a grade 3, grade 4 malnutrition, uh, you can minus 10. It should be 50, 40, and 30. Okay. I think, uh, Patani, you should uh, uh, ask them to mute the mute. Mute all phones now. Mute. Dr. Manu, please mute all the phones now. Okay, right. Head to examination, head to foot examination. Uh, in the nose and nasal cavity is congested. There was flaring of the positive findings. Positive findings. Flaring of the alien assay present. Nasal discharge and left sided inferior terminate hypertrophy was present. Hmm. Uh, dental caries were present, sir. Okay, that is important. Then drooping of the right shoulder present. Hmm. Just, in, just increased work of breathing was noticed as suprastern and intercostal and subcostal retractions. What are the causes of drooping of the shoulder? The uh, drooping can be caused due to. Uh, one pain, pleuritic pain, sir. Uh, then? Pleuritic pain. Then? Uh, then... Uh, In a respiratory problem, respiratory disease. Consolidation. Consolidation drooping will be there. In collapse, consolidation? Collapse. Ah, collapse. So when there is a drooping is there, you must suspect collapse in a child. Okay, right. Then? So some degree of drooping is there. Any other positive findings? No, sir. That's right, then? Then anthropometry, sir, uh, no PEMs, no standing or microcephaly. Okay. Examination of the respiratory. No, no. What about development? The developmental assessment I am not able to do for this child. What are the development screening charts available? Uh, Denver developmental, oh. Denver developmental screening chart. Then? then? Uh, 200 development screening charts. Screening chart. Then? What is the chart that is uh, used for definitely confirm the diagnosis of development delay? Any other name? Okay. So in this child, you could not assess. Because it's an older child. This is not required. Okay. Right then. The examination of the respiratory system. 
അപ്പർ റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി ട്രാക്ട് ആൾ ആർ നോർമൽ എക്സെപ്റ്റ് ഫോർ ലെഫ്റ്റ് ഈ ലെഫ്റ്റ് ഇൻഫീരിയർ ടർബിനേറ്റ് ഹൈപ്പർട്രോഫിൻ മ്യൂക്കോഡ് നേസൽ ഡിസ്ചാർജ് ആൾസോ അലൈൻ ഏസ് എ ക്ലാരിംഗ് പ്രോസൻ ഓക്കെ ക്ലാരിംഗ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഓറൽ കാവിറ്റി വാസ് നോർമൽ ഇയേഴ്സ് നോർമൽ റൈറ്റ് ദി ലോവർ റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി ട്രാക്ട് എക്സാമിനേഷൻ ഇൻ ദി ഇൻസ്പെക്ഷൻ ദി റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി ട്രാക്ട് വാസ് 68 പെർ മില്ലി അബ്ഡോമിനോ തറാസിക് ഷാലോ റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി എഫർട്ട് ദി ചെസ്റ്റ് വാൾ അപ്പിയേഴ്സ് ടു ബി പ്രോമിനന്റ് ഓൺ ദി റൈറ്റ് സൈഡ് കമ്പയർ ടു ദി ലെഫ്റ്റ് ദി ചെസ്റ്റ് മൂവ്മെന്റ്സ് അപ്പിയേർ ടു ബി ഡിമിനിഷ്ഡ് ഓവർ ദി റൈറ്റ് സൈഡ് and the drooping of the shoulder on the right side was present there was suprasternal intercostal and subcostal retractions okay palpation the position of the rake was central apex was in the left fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line just <coughs> was reduced is it normal is it normal no, apex sir. in the left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line no sir the shift is present shift to right uh, or left shift to left Ah, uh, where is where is the apex which you should felt in this age? Just fourth intercostal space. Just oh, age. what is the, what is the age of the child? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Hmm. In fourth intercostal space. Ah, uh, just medial. Sorry, ah, uh, just medial to. Medial or or lateral. Medial or lateral. Yes, I just seen lateral to mid clavicular line. Should be lateral to mid clavicular line. Yes. This is in the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. So, down some degree of radiation shift is there to the left side. No. Okay. The chest, chest movements are reduced on the right side. There was no crepitations or uh, palpable wrongly. No vocal fromitus. The vocal fromitus are increased over the right infraclavicular, axillary and uh, suprascapular area. The vocal fromitus decreased over the right. See, what are the common conditions in which you get uh, in this BR, in this BF? Consolidation. Hmm. Mainly consolidation. Okay. What about rural effusion? It will be decreased, sir. Decreased. Okay. Right. The vocal fromage is decreased over the right inframember, infraaxillary, infrascapular, and interscapular areas. Okay. Percussion. There is a normal resonant note heard percussing over all areas on the left side, but impaired percussion note is heard over the right infraclavicular mammary and axillary area, and stony dull note is heard on percussing the right inframember, infraaxillary, infrascapular, and interscapular area. Tidal percussion not able to be done. okay auscultation normal vesicular breath sounds heard over all areas on the left side the breath sounds were decreased over all areas on the right side with maximum decrease in breath sounds over the inframammary infraaxillary infrascapular and interscapular areas hmm okay the bronchial breath sounds were noticed on the right side uh, with more prominence over the infraclavicular mammary and suprascapular areas grunting was present coarse crepitations were heard over the infraclavicular and axillary area Uh, vocal resonance increased over the right infraclavicular axillary and suprascapular area vocal resonance decreased over the right inframammary infraaxillary infrascapular and interscapular areas there was no pleural rub okay so it just uh, become very confusing now can you summarize the physical findings now is there a slide on summary of the physical findings in that test the child was having tachypnea uh, uh, the child oh. was febrile tachypnea with increased work of breathing oh. uh, on uh, ex- examining the child the chest, chest wall appears to be more prominent over the right side with mm. the diminished chest movements over the right side mm. uh, the on palp uh, on palpation the apex uh, apex is found to be uh, shifted to the left side mm. uh, there was also decreased uh, vocal fromitus uh, mainly over the lower 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 uh, part of the chest Uh, mm-hmm. lower lower chest area so also the auscultation also the breath sounds are reduced over the uh, lower uh, lower lung areas and bronchial breathing was noticed over the right side especially over the upper upper lobe oh, you can say lobes now upper, which area upper zone upper zone or you can say in the area you can say so interscapular <laughs> or suprascapular the bronchial breath sounds are more towards the right infraclavicular mammary and suprascapular areas suprascapular areas okay so that is uh, confined to which lobe upper lobe sir. upper lobe okay right then examination was a cvs is it normal uh, normal sir uh, other systems cat was normal cns was normal examination of the musculoskeletal system was normal summary hmm the four year old developmentally normal and immunized up to age with the past history of admission for alri now admitted with fever right side at pleuritic chest pain of 6 days duration wet sounding cough and rhinitis of 2 days duration and grunting for one day on examination the child was irritable 
febrile tachypneic with increased work of breathing and grunting examination of the respiratory system showed drooping of the right shoulder prominence of the right side of the chest with a decreased chest movements impaired not heard over the right infraclavicular mammary and infra axillary areas stony dull not heard on percussing the right infra mammary infra axillary and infra scapular and interscapular areas air entry and vocal from it is reduced over all areas on the right side with maximum reduction over the infra mammary infra axillary infra scapular and interscapular area bronchial breath sounds were heard over the supra scapular mammary and infra clavicular area and all other systems were within normal so what is the diagnosis now uh, diagnosis right side lumbar sir why is right side lumbar sir uh, favoring points are from the history itself we are getting uh, the history that the chest tube is put and frank passive training also oh, that, that is that for the clinical examination sir from clinical examination we are having decreased chest movement the features of decreased chest movements on the right side stony dull not had mainly over the right lower zone breath sounds are reduced on the right lower zone wrong uh, and uh, vr and vf are also reduced on the right lower zone but uh, there are some other findings also for this side he said uh, there is a bronchial breathing in the uh, right infraclavicular area interscapular region and suprascapular region bronchial bronchial breathing was there and we are also is increased in that area yes so is there associated pneumonia can have associated pneumonia or it can be no no what is your opinion is it associated pneumonia or mbi myelon sir it is mbi myelon why because it is heard can, about can there be a bronchial breathing and uh, in this we are in a child with uh, uh, effusion massive effusion yes, sir egophony in egophony it is oh. a egophony sir it is an yeah. asking quality of vocal resonance heard over the area of uh, consolidation or uh, it can be heard or just about the effusion effusion can be there what about the uh, bronchial breathing uh, bronchial breathing can also be heard sir. heard there sir in a, above the level of pulmonary effusion there can be bronchial breathing so you think that there is only pneumo, uh, only effusion this child hmm. what are the clinical features of uh, pneumonia clinical examination findings fast breathing under sir fast breathing fast breathing will be there then the, examination the retractions can be there okay Uh, in clinical examination, the vocal, uh, the uh, vocal percussion. Hello, uh, yes, vocal from it is vocal from it is will be uh, uh, increased or increased. It will be increased then. Uh, then percussion, we will get a dull note. What type, of, what type of dullness? What type of dullness? Impaired resonance, impaired resonance will be there. Impaired resonance. Ah, uh, then. Then in the vocal, in the auscultation. Mm. Uh, we we can have bronchial breath sounds and also reduce wow. increased vr in this vr okay then adventitious adventitious sounds no, sir repetitions can be heard repetitions can be heard so do you think this is having associated pneumonia or effusion alone mm. effusion alone sir you think it is effusion alone but there is a history suggestive of probable pneumonia is there but all these physical findings can be explained by an effusion or embyema in that right side how you look for intercostal tenderness in this side is it important tenderness in the intercostal space is it important uh, yes sir what is the importance osteomyelitis osteomyelitis in the child with embyema what, what is embyema necessitate and is Yes, sir, I'm by my assistant. Pass the train. Pass the Frank. Pass training from inside to outside. Ah. Pass will not train outside. Pass will track through the intercostal space. So there can be a bulging of the intercostal space is there, and even you can demonstrate tenderness over the intercostal space. That is the by my assistant. That is so. In a case like this, you can just look for a, a tenderness also in a child. So. Now, how the how will you confirm the diagnosis? So you said the your diagnosis is embyema, uh, right side for this child. Any other possibility? Uh, sir, in this case, it's uh, embyema is the best fitting. Oh, the best fitting diagnosis is embyema in this child. Okay, can you confirm the diagnosis now? Uh, sir, we can take X-ray of X-ray of the child. Okay, show the X-rays. Show the X-rays. One second. Yes. What is that? Yes. Show the X-ray. What is that? Next X-ray. 
You comment on the X-rays? The X-ray chest of the child, PA view. It's a rotated film. Uh, there is a relatively well-defined uh, radio opacity noted in the right hemithorax with a relative sparing of the upper zone. Uh, hmm. Medial steroid shift is present. There is also obliteration of the right cardiophrenic and costophrenic angle. Hmm. Uh, the right diaphragm could not be well made out. Ellis curve can be seen at the above. Uh, the what is Ellis curve? The, uh, it's a... Uh, Higher level of uh, fluid over the axilla. Fluid. Ah, yes. oh, so it is, it is still there. You can see Ellis curve curve is, uh, is there. So what is your diagnosis now? It's a uh, right-sided effusion. So right-sided effusion. Right-sided fluid effusion. Is there a pneumonia in the X-ray? Mm. Sir, yes, sir. The, because the, the borders of the heart cannot be well made out. So, which, uh, which part of the lung is affected? Middle lobe of the lung is affected. Eh? Mid middle lobe. Middle, uh, middle lobe is affected because the right cardiac body is not clearly seen in this child. So, a positive silhouette sign is there. Right cardiac body is not seen. So, a positive silhouette sign is there. So, there is involvement of the uh, right middle lobe. What about lower lobe involvement? Lower lobe? Lower lobe is also involved, sir. Why? You cannot make out the uh, cardiophrenic angle. And, and, and also, cardiac 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 not cardiophrenic angle, diaphragm. The left lobe of diaphragm is also not, not seen very well. What is the other radiological evidence of pneumonia in a child? What else will you look for? What else will you look in the X-ray? You must look for air bongogram. Mm -hmm. yeah. Air bongogram. Yes. If it is there, it is suggestive of pneumonia. Okay, then... Other investigations? Uh, red investigation showed elevated total count with a poly predominant and CRT oh. was 113. Okay. Uh, then CECT just was taken. Uh, it was uh, showing a thick loculated embryo on the right side with the consolidation of the uh, right lower and middle lower. See, I will ask you one question. Uh, after seeing the X ray, what is the next investigation of Joyce? Ultrasound or CT? Ultrasound, sir. Ultrasound was then, ultrasound taken, sir. Ultrasound was so taken. both ultrasound and CT is good or only one? Ultrasound is the best one. Why? Why, do, why ultrasound is the best one? And so in ultrasound, ultrasound one, uh, one benefit is radiation exposure is uh, oh. no radiation exposure. Next one, okay. itself is a uh, uh, itself gives uh, the diagnosis of embryo can be made by ultrasound itself. Then what are the things you will uh, look in the fluid? Uh, sir, it, uh, in the ultrasound, there is a grading, sir. Uh, there yeah. are four grades. Hmm. Uh, there are the, four grades are there, no? Four grades are there. In grade hmm. one and grade two, there will not be any septations. Hmm. In grade one, uh, the fluid will be anechoic, and hmm. there will not be any septations. In grade hmm. two, the fluid will be echoic, but uh, no septations will be present. In grade three and four, in grade three and four, the septations will be present. In grade three, six, the septations will be present. And grade four, with the septation, solidification is also there. Okay. Yeah, so, ultrasound is uh, more beneficial or CT? Ultrasound. ultrasound. What are the findings in the CT? Uh, sir, in this CT, we can uh, see thick loculated embryoma can be seen, sir. Thick loculated embryoma can be seen. Also, okay. in the next film, uh, we can have a, uh, the sign, split pleura sign can be seen, which is the most definitive sign in CT, which is seen in embryoma. Okay, right. Other investigations? Sir, uh, then the pleural fluid aspirate. Okay. Uh, the appearance uh, is the purulent. Leukocyte count was almost uh, 1 lakh 4,000. pH was 7.1. .1. Protein 4.27 gram per deciliter. Pleural fluid protein to serum protein more than 0.5. LDH is uh, 30,000. Pleural fluid to LDH serum. LDH is more than 0.6. Glucose. That is positive. That is positive. That is suggestive of M by M. It's not so. Pleural LDH is a serum LDH more than 0.6. It's suggestive of M by M. Okay, right. Culture also showed growth of heavy growth of Staphylococcus aureus, which is sensitive to angomycin and linosol. So it is not MRS, it is sensitive to angomycin and linosol. Okay. Now the diagnosis become very easy now. Now what is the diagnosis now? Right. <laughs> what is the diagnosis? Staphylococcus right side embryo, sir, with the uh, uh, etiology. Etiology. Uh, it's a staphylococcal embryo on the right side. Okay, right. Next investigation, follow-up investigations. Sir, on X-ray, okay. X-ray was taken 16? on 16, sir. Okay, what is there in the X-ray? 
Day 16, the X-ray was taken. The X-ray chest uh, is showing Im improvement. Uh, compared to the previous X-ray, the chest X-ray is showing improvement, but it is still having lower zone hyacinus, also with obliteration of the cardioplenic and costoplenic angle. Uh, the right cardiac border is also not well made out in this X-ray. I think the right cardiac border is uh, well seen, but the main problem is uh, right doom of diaphragm is not seen and costoplenic angle is obliterated. So is there an empyma still now? It's still present. Sir. There's still some degree of effusion is uh, still there. Okay. Right? It's, on, it's an X-ray which is taken from follow-up day from... Uh, one month. After yeah. one month. No. Yes. What this is that? Showing, our PA view showing uh, improvement with almost... Uh, we can see normal lung fields. With the right diaphragm is also able to be made out. So the empyma is almost clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. Right? Any other X-ray? Any other X-rays? No, no, sir. No. So, how will you manage this child? How this child was managed? Uh, the first, sir, uh, this child was managed uh, at admission. Uh, the child was um, started on IV antibiotics initially. Uh, as Subtraxone and cloxacillin was added. Uh, then after that, the v we did a uh, ICD insertion was done on postnatal day 3. And the pleural fluid was suggestive of exudative pleural effusion and also uh, USC, USC was also suggestive of Mbima. Uh, then through the ICD through we have uh, ICD and after seeing the pleural fluid uh, culture report we have hiked the antibiotic to uh, vancomycin, IV vancomycin uh, and uh, through the intercostal tube we have given fibrinolytic streptokinase for a total of 5 days duration. Uh, the how, much, how much streptokinase was given? Uh, how much streptokinase was given? Dose. 15, what is the dose of uh, streptokinase and urokinase? Streptokinase was given as 15,000 units per kg, sir. Uh, urokinase? Urokinase, 40,000 units in 40 ml of saline, which is given BD dose. 40 or 30? 40, sir. 40. How it is given? It is uh, given through the tube and we have a 4 hour uh, stay time will be given. Hmm. It is introduced through the chest tube and chest tube should be calm for? It's Three to four, hour, four hours to be calmed. So you are given uh, urokinase for this child. Okay, no, right? Okay, yes, okay, yes, right. Then? And then the child uh, got child child got improved, sir. Child got improved and the repeat X-ray was also uh, showing improvement. So the... So when, uh, see, when was the test tube put in this child? The test tube was put on day three. Day three? Yes. Then what was the indication for uh, giving... Uh, Eurocyptokinase? Sir, the child was having fever and also uh, the, fe the fever subsided after we have given the fibrinolytics. Yeah. How long will you give antibiotics? How long antibiotics was given for this child? I, antibiotics, IV antibiotics should be continued uh, at least two weeks till the ICD tube is in situ. For this child? For this child, what was given? This child, we have given antibiotics for... But you said that the subtraction with the... Prox was given first, then? Uh, and then the antibiotics were changed to vancomycin. And? Vancomycin and... Uh, Dinosaurin? Dinosaurin, sir. Why, was it given? Was yes, there sir. a need for giving uh, both the drug? Especially no. when you get a, got a culture report as uh, vancomycin and linisolid. What is the advantage of uh, linisolid over vancomycin? The vancomycin resistant linisolid will be more effective. Eh? VRSA, vancomycin resistant... Oh. Staphylococcus aureus and also it can be given orally also. Oh, the main thing is that uh, you can have a change over the drug. You can step down by using oral drugs. See, what do you mean by PVL toxin? PVL toxin. PVL toxin in connection with a staph infection. The pandan valentine leucosidine toxin. That can produce necrotizing pneumonia. Uh, what is the drug of choice for P PBL producing organism? What's the drug of choice? Uh, antibiotic of choice, not linisolid. The antibiotic of choice should be uh, clindamycin. It's clindamycin. So, how long uh, have you given vancomycin for this child? Almost 21 days. 21 days. Linisolid? Dinosaurid, uh, we have changed, uh, we have continued dinosaur for, for, for 
planning for six weeks. For six weeks. What about the child now? How is the condition of the child now? The the child came for follow up on OPD thirty eight, sir. Mm. And that time child is uh, completely asymptomatic. Mm. Okay. Now the child is perfectly all 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 right. Yes, what is the empirical treatment for empyema? The treatment is mainly empirical. Uh, we must be giving uh, covering the streptococcus and staphylococcus. We will be initially uh, starting on streptococcus and clocsacid. You start with the streptococcus and clocsacid. If the child is not responding, then uh, we must take uh, the antibiotic. Uh, no. If the culture report is available, then we can mm. change the antibiotic according to that. Mm. Uh, if uh, if not available, we can suspect. Staff and we can hike the antibiotic to vancomycin. Hmm. What are the other other modalities of treatment for empyema? Uh, sir, empyema one one is IV antibiotics. If the other modalities of treatment. First, when a child is coming, uh, ah. then we can take an X-ray and uh, confirm the presence of if clinical features are suggestive of uh, empyema. We should take an X-ray and uh, both the PA and the lateral view. Okay. And if it is uh, less than uh, 10 millimeter. Thickness is uh, seen in the lateral decubitus view, and then antibiotics uh, is needed. Uh, no thoracosynthesis is needed. Okay. Fluid collection is uh, more than 10 millimeter thick on the lateral decubitus view. Then yeah. we uh, give antibiotics for the child. Also, we must do a thoracosynthesis and do a pleural. Okay. So, if the pleural study is suggestive of uh, empyema, yeah. then UST or CT can be done. UST can be done. Yeah. Uh, UST. Then we, if we are finding a Thick peel, yeah. Thick peel of that is uh, the pneumonia. That embryo has progressed to its final stage, organizational stage. So in that ch children's antibiotics plus decortication may be needed. If, decortication uh, or something else before that. Uh, go fine. directly for decortication or uh, will you go for a thoracoscopic surgery? Yeah. And that's what is that's video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. So before that, you can try for a video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. And if it is failing, you must uh, go for a, a decortication. Yes, What are the complications this child can develop? The uh, longer pleural fistula can be developed. Okay, then. Uh, uh, pneumothorax can be done. Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, right? Then. Uh, then. Uh, pericarditis. Yes, pericarditis. Yes, yes. Then. Then. Okay, metastatic abscess can occur, posterior meningitis can occur, septic arthritis can occur. Uh, these are the complications that uh, this child can develop. Have you got any other slide? Any other slides with you? Right, sir. Just as our bacterial causes of MBM. Okay, right. You just say. And then uh, stages of MBM. What are the bacterial causes of MBM? Sir. What are the bacterial causes of MBM? Also, MBMA strepto in the order of uh, bacteria: the Streptococcus pneumonia, Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus filari, Methicillin sensitive Staph aureus, Methicillin resistant Staph aureus, Pons and Haemophilus influenza, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Pseudomonas, Mycoplasma pneumonia, and Chlamydia pneumonia. Indian scenario: Streptococcus pneumonia and Staphylococcus aureus are the most common offense. Okay. What are the stages of MBMA? Yeah, just of MBM is as an exudative stage and fibrinopurulent stage and organization stage. The exudation stage in the exudative stage, the fibrinous exudate forms on the pleural surface. In fibrinopurulent stage, the septa will be formed. It causes localization of the fluid and thickening of the parietal pleura. And in this stage, if the pus is not drained in, it may dissect through the pleura and into the lung parenchyma. Can produce bronchopleural fistula, pyoma thorax, and it can also uh, dissect into the abdominal cavity. And the pus. Uh, dissecting through the chest wall is known as embryo resistance. Okay, the, okay, right. The organization say there is a fibroblast proliferation, and uh, pockets of loculated pus may develop, and thick wall abscess cavities may form, and the lung may collapse and become surrounded by a thick inelastic envelope peel. If peel is developed, then we must uh, decortic, uh, we must do a vat so decortication surgery may be needed. Okay, uh, now any. Uh, comments uh, from the other uh, faculty members. Any comments or questions? Can you just uh, unshare the slides? Stop the slides. Okay. Uh, uh.
thing uh, what about uh, dr dali dali is here Uh, any comments or questions you can ask now? Sir, I am the mentor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, anybody, any comments from somebody? Any senior faculty? Shanavas, sir. Shanavas, sir. Yeah, okay, Shanavas. Can you share my slides? Ajay, I have got a few slides now. Can you just uh, share? Manu? Sir, can I share okay. the slides now? Okay, sir. Sir, in the lab, sir. Ah. Sir, question and I. Ah, right. Uh, any age-related related thickness for ascitic tab for Bima? Ascitic tab or plural tab? Ascitic plural. tab, maybe plural tab. Can you do the questions once again? Any age-related ah. thickness for ascitic tab? Any age-related? Any age related? Thickness for? Ah. Plural tab for M by ma. Ah, M by which should be more than 10 millimeters. Actually, as he said, uh, in all children, you must uh, take a lateral decubitus view. Lateral decubitus view and the lateral decubitus, it is more than uh, 10 millimeters. Uh, you must put a tube and see. And that is called a modified life criteria. I can show a few of the slides now. Manu, can I share now? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. You can do it. Yes, sir. This is visible. This is visible. Am I yes, audible? Sir. Audible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I will just uh, show you a few X-rays uh, in a child with a difficult pneumonia. This is a different topic. Difficult pneumonia means uh, usually in a child with a uh, with an acute pneumonia, and the fever and symptoms should subside within uh, 48 to 72 hours. If the child symptoms are not sub subsiding in 48 to 72 hours, you call it as a difficult to treat pneumonia. I will. Uh, Ajay, what is the what is the diagnosis here? Ajay, what is the diagnosis? Sir, uh, left uh, upper ah. lobe pneumonia. It is a left upper lobe pneumonia. This is what is called an air bongogram. You can see air bongogram here. Is that right? Upper lobe and pneumonia. Okay, right, right, right. And I will see. This is difficult pneumonia, which I is having a persistent fever more than 72 hours, persistent tachypnea, desaturation, persistent lung signs. Then it is called a difficult to treat pneumonia. I will do. Hey, what is this X-ray shows? Ajay, or any, any PGs can say, any PGs who are here can answer. Right upper lobe pneumonia. I say right upper lobe pneumonia. And what is there? Some RO mark is given here. Bulging fissure. It's a bulging fissure that is seen in which pneumonia? Which pneumonia? Granite. 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 Cardiac silotis and cardiac. Positive sign. The cardiac border is not seen. And also, you can see the uh, middle lobe here. Okay, right. What is this one? Yeah, Another BGs can also say if some BGs are there, please. Ah, you can see pneumatoseal. Which are the pneumonias associated with pneumatoseal? Staph. Only staphylococcus then? Other pneumonia, Steptococcus also. Steptococcus also. Pepsilla ah, also. Pseudomonas also it can be there. What is this? It's a very old x-ray. It is again. Dali, these are the x-rays from ICS court time. Yes, sir. I got it. Very old one. Yes. <laughs> uh, here you can see what? What is there? Any PGs? You can take up. Here you can see a pneumonia yeah. right, right upper lobe with cavity. Multiple yeah. cavities and the bulging fissure. Yeah. This is what is called a bulging fissure sign. Normally, the horizontal fissure should be horizontal like this. Yes. But in this child, there is a bulging is there. It's a very typical capsular pneumonia. Pneumonia uh, affecting right upper lobe. 
bulging fissure, cavitation. We we'll leave that. What is this one? Diagnosis written there, but still. Ajay. Uh, right upper sound consolidation. Uh, what else is there in the consolidated, consolidated lung? Air. 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 Cavity. Cavity. This is a cavity. So it is a reactivation tuberculosis. Reactivation. Lymph nodes also there, no? Uh, lymph nodes is also there. You can see multiple cavities are there. Reactivation tuberculosis. These are the complications of pneumonia. Paranemonic effusion with M by M, lung abscess. I was just uh, talking about necrotizing pneumonia produced by PBL toxin, then pneumatoceles and the bronchopleural fistula. Yes, uh, what is the diagnosis here? This is one of the complications. Pneumothorax. Uh, pneumothorax. In addition to pneumothorax, what else is there? This pneumothorax is there. I think it's more black here. Yeah. Any other thing? The left. Uh, there is a pap's lung. Effusion on the left cardiophrenic angle is obliterated. Left, left cardiophrenic angle is obliterated. But you can see a horizontal level here, no? Yeah. Hydronium or thorax. Uh, there's a horizontal level is also here. So it is a yeah. Hydro-pneumothorax, bio-pneumothorax. This is the collapsed lung. This is a collapsed lung. Here you can see the horizontal level of fluid and the air here. You can see the fracas and the cyst. This is a bio-pneumothorax, a complications of staphylococcal pneumonia. This is an empiric antibiotic therapy for a paranemonic effusion and bima. You start with clocks with an Cephotaxime or septriaxone. If you strongly suspect an anaerobic infection or infection with PBL toxin, rindamycin, MRSA, and vancomycin. And this is what he was talking about. This is what is called a modified LIGHTS classification for diagnosing and management of MBIMA. Class one is paranemonic effusion. All children suspected of MBIMA, you take a left, uh, lateral decubitus view. And if the thickness is, uh, of fluid is more than 10 millimeter, give less than 10 millimeter, give antibiotic alone. If it is uh, more than 10, 10 millimeter, then you must uh, do a thoracosynthesis and uh, look for pH less than 7.2, glucose 40, gram stain negative, give antibiotic alone, antibiotic and thoracosynthesis. And if the pH is very low, less than 7.2, glucose less than 40, gram stain positive, then you must give antibiotic with tube thoracostomy. You must put a tube. So this is the indication for putting a tube. So if the effusion is less than 10 millimeter, give only anti antibiotic. So only a paranemonic effusion. If the size is more than 10, and you must go for antibiotic with thoracosynthesis, if the culture is positive, if tube thoracostomy uh, with antibiotic. Then uh, class two is called embyma. Class two is in modified life criteria is embyma. So you must do an ultrasound and see. Look for uh, loculations. If uh, loculations are there, you must go for a tube thoracostomy. And multiple loculations with a plural peel. And that is, uh, you must uh, give uh, thrombolytics. And the uh, second option is video-assisted thoracoscopic debridement. And lastly, uh, decortication. Dr. Ajay has all said this. Uh, regarding one way, regarding uh, thrombolytics, even though it is a new thing, we are given thrombolytics years back in ICH Kotem. In ICH Kotem, when I was there, I remember for one yes. of our PG, Dr. Vinod, no, no. Uh, Vinod, Vinod uh, Jacob Varghis, Vinod Varghis, uh, yeah. Vinod Chariya Varghis, uh, Vinod Chariya Varghis, his thesis was on M by M, the role of uh, thrombolytics, septokinase. I was his guide, and he has done, uh, given uh, thrombolytic treatment for nearly 15 patients. At that time, years back, probably it is some 20 years back, we have tried. Sir, it was in 2002 to 5. Uh, 2 to 5. So, just uh, yeah. some 15 years back, again, we have tried all these things. Thermolytic therapy for M by M. So, this was. Dr. Jayamar who helped him. Yes. Dr. Jayamar. Jayamar. Uh, Jayamar. There is our cardiothoracic surgeon who helped him. This was a dose to be given for at least 5 to 6 days, it should be given. So, another x-ray, NJ, what is there? 
diagnosis written there one of the bg scan read j abscess sir abscess as a lung abscess what is this one pneumonia pneumonia with effusion oh this is again you are talking about elysis curve yes. so suppose the elysis curve is there effusion is there you can see multiple pneumocytosis here yes, so again this a hepatitis staff pneumonia probably pvl positive hepatitis pneumonia this one pneumocytosis multiple pneumocytosis uh, again staphylococcal pneumonia this one this one collapse yes. left you can see pneumonia bronco pneumonia with collapse left yes, lower left lower lobe collapse is there this what is this one right side yeah this is uh, uh, this can be big pneumonia this is again thymus thymus is the bronchiolitis bronchi what is this one this is another one of icsh patient again icsh patient yes. the pulmonary agenesis here you can see the main findings in this child is that right side is normal left side left hemithorax is completely opaque there is completely opaque left hemithorax and uh, there is no bronchial vascular marking here so there is no lung here and there is a complete mediastinal shift to the left side complete uh, uh, shift of the heart heart is completely shifted to the uh, left side there is no bronchial pulmonary marks the mediastinal shift is there this is a pulmonary agenesis just again confirmed by ct okay we'll uh, the one more uh, just uh, kiss what is this one ajay this child has possible the recurrent pneumonia just look at the throat any bg can make a diagnosis just look at the throat in this child and make a diagnosis recurrent pneumonia absent tonsil yes right very good absent tonsil so which condition this are the findings in this child iga low igg low igm low IgE is also low. Is A gamma globulinemia. A gamma globulinemia can be diagnosed in a child with recurrent pneumonia. Just examine the throat, throat and look for tonsil. If it is not there, it is an A gamma uh, globulinemia. So we will uh, stop now. Okay, right. Okay, I stop the Okay, so I thanks uh, the ICH people, especially Dr. Darley. Uh, dr padani for giving this opportunity uh, for uh, moderating this session and ajay has done very well and you must uh, give a loud round of applause to ajay he was answering almost all questions done done fantastically well ajay i think we can give up to 70% marks for ajay for presentation so thank ajay, you ajay ajay i have one question to you okay. can we uh, your md examiner suppose this uh, one is, is your name the examiner what is your final diagnosis Okay, run well. Okay, Dali, thank you. Sare, angra dalle class ayro do. Back to the olden times. Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. See, I have taken a class after two years. For the last two years, I was not not taking a clinic. Oh, just just like Sare, angra padpiche varan nee kinu Sare. Can he can repeat again? No. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very so. much. We'll stop. Yeah. Thank you. Now, what a thing, sir. What a thing. What a thanks, sir. Ah, please again. Ah, okay. Parnato, sir. Sir, on behalf of our president, Dr. Patani, sir, and our vice president, Darley, madam, I would like to thank Professor T. Sugman, sir. So your class was memorable. It was really nice. And you're such a great teacher. We are proud of you. And I.P. Kottem has got the best teacher. And uh, it was really a great detailed discussion from right from history taking to reaching the diagnosis. each and every point we actually got a pocket guide on all the respiratory cases along with the dds and i hope all the pgs who attended today's session 
they would have been really en enlightened and uh, any respiratory case i think now uh, we can deal with knowing all the details and how to approach right approach and finally reaching the diagnosis which actually nowadays when we go out to practice we uh, they diagnose everything by lab investigation just x-ray ultrasound ct right that, that's how we usually now we diagnose but after a long time we are getting a history taking and through history taking and clinical examination we are reaching a diagnosis and then going to the investigation that actually i think only pg's practice outside we don't do and really it is a good pocket guide for all the pg students and we are looking forward for further such sessions from you sir and i would also like to thank dr ajay edwin for going doing such a nice presentation and he really each and every negative points all the positive points everything he contributed a lot and it was a kick start for iap cotting with a grand success with a pg club and thank you shana sir and jo sir for joining the session today i think they have left and thank you all the senior teachers post graduate post graduates and our iap members for making this pg club a grand success we had nearly 78 participants it was a nice class